Good afternoon everybody, Colin here with IRBReviews.com. Today we're going to be installing the DRAC 5 card from Dell on this Dell PowerEdge 1950 server. This is the Dell Remote Access card, 5th edition. Um, that's what it looks like right there. PCI on the top, which will not be used for this application. That is, I don't know what that's for, nobody ever uses it. Um, and then it has the RJ45 right here for connecting it for remote access. So the way you install this is right in the back here. There is a there's two uh, ribbon cable connections. You're going to install the provided ribbon cables. So let me do that real quick. Um, let me reposition the camera too so you can see back over there. Okay, so as you can see, I have installed the first um, ribbon cable right there. There is a little connector right here which makes it kind of hard to insert it. Okay, so I did get everything in. It is easier if you install the ribbon cables on the card first and then snap it down and then you can align them to hook it up on the two ribbon connectors right here. It's not a perfect alignment between the card and the board connector so there is a little bit of wiggling around that you have to do and this card right here is in the way with this connector that, ha that has to go underneath that. So it is a little bit to, um, to get that in there but now all you have to do is plug your ethernet cable. I have two plugged into this one. You plug one into the RJ45 on the card and then I'm going to show you how to set it up from this point and then over how to access it on the computer. Okay, so I had to do a voiceover for this part right here just because it's so loud. But when that uh, comes up, you're gonna want to hit Control E to access the panel where you can set up the different stuff for the remote access controls. This will be here whether you have the card inside the or installed or not. Um, you're going to want to make sure IPMI over LAN is on. You will get a warning. Just hit enter and it will switch to on. Then you're going to want to scroll down to LAN parameters. And at this point you will set your IP address whether you use DHCP or static is up to you. I just let it obtain an IP address over DHCP and then I switch it to static and use the same address that it found with DHCP. That way I don't have to worry about the IP address being taken or anything like that. And then if I set it to static, I don't have to worry about it changing. So you're going to put, want to put the default gateway to the, you know, your, your router's gateway. Uh, my router is 192.168.1.1. You're going to want to set your subnet mask. Some of these network settings will be specific to your network setup. So you are going to want to refer to your network setup for setting some of these. After you do that, you can scroll down and set up the LAN user configuration. My password, my username and password is root. Um, so I just made a new password here. Make sure you hit enter and not escape when you're done with this or it will not save. Like I said, password root and then you can make, or username root and then you can make whatever password you want. After that, save it and then you're going to go over to a computer and type in your IP address into a web browser. So once you have the card installed, you're going to want to head over to your web browser, go to the IP address you set, so 192.168.1.107, and you want to go ahead and hit enter, and it's going to bring you to the login page. Again, the password, I, or the username I created was root, that was the default, and then I created a password. If you want to make other users, you can go to remote access, configuration, and then users, and you can set up multiple users here. So user, user ID 1 is disabled, user ID 2 is the root, so you can edit those right there. And then this is running the latest software 1.65 for the remote access controller. If you want to update your remote access controller, you just go down to remote access and it's going to be the first one direct update. You're going to want to choose the file, um, I downloaded mine from the Dell website upload the file and click update and it will update right away. Now the server is not powered on but you can still access this card. I'm not going to power on because it's really loud um, but when it is on you can normally access these right here to view batteries, fans, intrusion information, uh, power information, stuff like that. You can also view the system logs so it will show you all the different errors and you know different statuses that have occurred. You can also power on, power off, restart and power cycle this system. You can set up so you can get email alerts, 
if uh, you can set if something like one of these events right here occurs, whether it will reboot, power cycle, power off, or reduce power to the system. So you can there's a whole bunch of different features you can have this card do. This card is um, really easy to set up. I got this for $1.99 on eBay, so they're really cheap. If you want to add one into an existing uh, Dell PowerEdge server, this works on the ninth generation of PowerEdge servers. So anything with a 9 right here, this is a 1950. You can do the 2950 uh, and so on and so forth. But that's how you set it up after you create your um, IP address, or not create your IP address, but set your IP address. That's how you access it. You just type it in any URL and it will automatically pull this page up and you can go ahead and log in. This has been ConalThiopReviews.com. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe for more tutorials, up, uh, review videos, and more. Have a great day.